I'm Rick Johansson and this is Iron Echo Design. In this Inkscape video, I'm going to show you how you can take any vector object and create this type of mandala design. We've done this before just with geometric patterns and you can see over the years my own skill level progressing a bit. So we're going to follow along with similar steps. One of the things I also want to highlight is as Inkscape has changed over the years, some of the features moved. And in these two tutorials, the guides creator, because we have to make the hash marks in the middle of the page, it moved. So if you're looking for it, go up to extensions, document, guides creator. That'll give you a pop-up and all you need is regular guide, two columns, two rows. Hit apply. It'll think for a second and then the guides will be created right on the center of the page. And we need this to do uh, the two different techniques we're going to use. Incidentally, this page right here, you can do any size you want, but if you want to follow along, you can go to File, Document Properties. This is the A4 format. Now you can use any type of vector object. I'm going to bring in an image from Raw Pixel. I'll have a link in the description below. And what we're going to do to take this PNG and create our vector object is we'll do Trace Bitmap. So go up to Path, Trace Bitmap. If you've never used this before, basically it says, we'll take a look at whatever image you select. In this case, we're doing single scan detection mode brightness cutoff. Inkscape will look at the image and based on the threshold you decide, it'll take out the darkness or the lightness. So if you slide it, you can make it all dark, very light. It looked good right where it was. 0.475 is fine. You don't have to change anything else. I have speckles, smooth corners, and optimize all selected. Here's a live preview. Apply. And you get your, this is now a vector object. If I double click on it, you can see all the nodes. That's how Inkscape works. It creates images through all these different nodes and using math. There's also a lot of nodes, and the more nodes you have, the harder Inkscape needs to work to do some of the other techniques. So you can go up to Path, Simplify, right here. And you see how it reduced the number of nodes? It's still a lot, but it'll be fine for this exercise. Get rid of that. And I will duplicate this with the control D because we're going to use it again at the end. And here is the new technique. I have it selected. I'm going to make it a group because that'll come in handy for later. So I can do control G or just go up to object group. Now go to path and you go down to path effects. Inkscape really cleaned up how the path effects menu works. If you want to see all of them, hit the delta and you can see all the different choices, but we'll just do mirror, mirror symmetry. And right there it creates the second one, but we don't want to do the mode freely defined mirror line. We want vertical page center like this. That's step one, pretty easy. Step two, we'll add a second path effect. Go back to the path effect search bar and type in rotate. Rotate copies, pretty cool. And we'll do 12, so method normal number of copies 12. You can see what it did already. We want to go up to this tool, the node tool. If you click that, you'll take the center and drag it down to the center of your page. There we go. Now, if you want it to snap in, do you see how that snapped in automatically? Up here, this magnet with a lightning bolt, that is enable snapping. Click it to highlight it, hit the triangle, and you'll see all the different choices. You want to find the one down here, guidelines. As long as that one is selected, it will click itself in. Okay, well, why couldn't we just skip the mirror symmetry? You could, you can make it rotate copies like this, but this is the fun part. If I double click on the original one right there, I can go and drag around all the nodes. So I have the handles. If you don't see your handles, this icon right here will put the handles on. And now whatever I do to the original gets reflected around everything. So I can make it bigger. See, I can make it smaller. If you zoom in and hit one of the nodes, any node doesn't matter. Then the handles turn into rotational handles and you can rotate it. I see this little line here. That is actually a snapping feature. That tells me if I disable snapping, 
it'll make the rotation go better. See, now I can rotate it in real time. I think we'll leave it right there. Remember how I said, make sure you group it before you do this function or these two functions? That's because if you go up to layers right here, object layers, or you can go to object layers and objects. Don't worry about all this. This is some of the intro part of the tutorial. This path right here is the one that we're playing with. If I hide it with the eyeball, you can see I'm using this. What you do if you want to add more layers is click onto the G3, which is the group we created. Right click it and down here you'll see enter group three. That means we can put something else in there. I'll get another one of these butterflies. Control D to duplicate it. And you see my layers? I know it's this one path four. If it makes it easier, you can actually retitle it. Call it butterfly two. All you need to do is drag it into the group. And it does the same function. I can find the original one, double click. I think it's this one, it is and I go to selector tool, I will drag it into the center. Look at that. And you can just visually play around with it and see where you want it to go. Okay, you can keep going through inside the group settings, but that could be complicated. If you want to lock in these different inner or outer, anything that you created inside the group, click on the layer. So you're no longer inside the group at all. And now when you select it, you can do path, object to path. The mirror and rotate copies feature is locked in and you can't do it to the inner circle either, but that's good because now I can take the top one, control D, and freely make changes without it having uh, reflecting all over the place. Just to nail home the technique, let's do one more natural one. So I'll get the original piece, but this time we'll only do six rotate copies. I'm not going to group it because it's only going to be one piece. Go to path, path effects. We'll do mirror, vertical page center, add the rotate copies, keep it at six, node tool, and we drag it to the center. Lock that one in, path, object to path. You can play with the colors. I think I'll make the inner circle a light blue. I probably did that off camera. I just played around with each different layer, messing around with the colors. And now we'll pop in the original butterfly on top. And there you have it. You can do whatever type of object you want. See what you like. See what type of things you can create on your own. Let me know what you come up with in the comments. And we'll see you next time.